Hey, what's up guys? This is Theo from Final Concepts and today I'm going to show you how to create this simple photo manipulation in Adobe Photoshop. So let's just get started. Welcome to Fino Concept. Click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. So first of all, let's open up our application. I'm using Photoshop CC 2018. Um, then I'll just click and drag my image in here. First thing we are going to do is create a selection of our subjects right here. So for that, I'll just be using the quick selection tool and I'll create a selection around my subject like so. So I'm just clicking and dragging over these edges to get a rough selection. Now, of course, I'll tell you to use the pen tool or something to make sure that this selection is a little bit perfect. So to take out away a selection, I'll just hold down Alt and I'll just take that part out, this part out and that part also out. Now, this is a rough selection so make sure yours is way better than mine so once i'm done i'll just right click and go to layer via copy so all i have is a copy of the image right here if you haven't watched our video tutorial on how to make your images pop you should probably check that one out i'll leave it linked in the description below so basically that's what you are going to do is more or less like a duplicate of that work so I'll just go to the adjustment panel. I click on hue or saturation and I'll reduce the saturation to about um, negative 50 for the image below. So that is going to affect just the image below. You can see the before and after. Now I'm going to hold down control and click on this thumbnail and I want it to pop a little bit. So I'll go back to the adjustment panel. I'll click on curves and I'll create a curve like uh curve like so now obviously if it is too dark for you you can always reduce your opacity so i think about 50 percent opacity is okay now another thing i would like to do with the background selected i go to the adjustment panel i click on solid color then i'm going to select um a dark blue so something like 030717 should be okay and I'll change the blend mode from normal to color. Okay, so uh, let's quickly make sure this is a layer. I'll hold down shift, I'll click on the top layer and group this up by control G. Um, I'll probably call this background image or something. I'll create a new group on top and I'll call it the Ruby's Cube. So I'll put that one here. So for the Ruby's Cube image, I have a couple of shots um, I didn't want to download from Google and you know, have to go through any copyright thing. I think I'll use this image as the main Ruby's Cube image. So I'll open it up in Adobe Photoshop and I'll just create a selection around this too. I have to use the pen tool to create a selection around this. So let's quickly do that. Now, once this is done, I'll just right click and go to make selection, leave everything as it is and click on OK. So I currently, if I zoom out, you can see I have a selection of just the Ruby's Cube. So I can go ahead and select any of the selection to any of them at all. Right click and go to layer via cut. So what this will do is to cut the image outside of the background. So I'll just go ahead and delete the background. I don't need it anymore. So I'll just click and drag this onto our main image and resize it to fit um, like so. It doesn't have to be too big, I think. I think just about this size should be okay. Now I'm going to obviously try to cover up a few parts of my face. So I'll close this up. I don't need it anymore. And this is what we are getting. But just having one Ruby's Cube is not enough. So I'll go ahead and import the rest of my images and just take care of the background. So fortunately, I wouldn't want you to sit there and watch me do all of that. So I'm going to speed up from here onwards. Okay. 
okay so i'm done i'll just quickly turn off the eyeball for all of them because i want to work on them one after the other but if you were paying attention you may have realized that for the rest of the images i wasn't really concerned about the selection because the main focus is going to be on this rubik's cube and not the others and apart from that the others will be in motion blur so i'm going to um be adding some motion blur here and there so the focus like i said it's not going to be on those images but on the main one which is in front of us like so uh, so for that i'll just reduce the size of anything else so that your eyes don't know sway off to the other side so i'll place one uh let's place one somewhere around here okay i'll turn this one two on now i'm going to put this one somewhere around here no to cover up the screen a little bit and i'll put one somewhere up here uh you know what let's rotate this so i'll flip this vertically and i'll put it somewhere here i don't want to, it to cover up too much so i just reposition um some of these i will just put this here i'll duplicate this and change the orientation so i so i don't think anyone will notice this no well, let's even rotate it to something like this okay so let's start adding our blur before we come to the main image so um this is the main ruby's cube let's just group that up and i'll call it main because um the work we are going to be applying on this is quite different from the rest so let's just group that one up and now for the ones at the corners which is um, layer 8 this and that um, i'm going to filter and under filter i'll go to blur and under blur i'll go to Gaussian blur and i'll blur it up about 10 pixel i think with that radius we should be fine now if you are using photoshop um css you have to hold down ctrl and press f to apply the same filter but on the newer version which is cc um yeah cc going you have to hold down ctrl alt and f so that's what i'm going to do and that's going to just apply the same effect now for the rest we want to apply a motion blur to it not a gaussian blur so go to filter go to blur and apply motion blur now for this one i want um the blur to be moving from you know from the bottom to the top in this particular angle which is negative 35 and i'll increase the size well you make the size any way you want i think i'll go with um 40 for this one i click ok and i'll do the same for the rest but make sure you keep in mind the various angle you are going to apply for this so this time around this i wouldn't want it to be going in this direction i want it to be going in the opposite direction so i'll just click and put this somewhere around here so i think 45 will be okay and i'll decrease this to about 20 so that we have this kind of variation between the various images i put this here go to filter blur motion blur and you know what i'm going to increase the blur of this to about 50. i select this image filter blur motion blur i'll change the direction maybe 58 i'll reduce this to about 30 and for the last rubik's cube um again blur motion blur i think the angle is okay um let's try 65 or probably negative 45 so i think this is okay now i'm going to leave um everything the way it is i think the whole design is looking pretty damn good so now let's come to the main rubik's cube which is our main focus for today i'll just zoom in a little bit so we are going to darken up the bottom of this image <laughs> as a bottom so just make sure that image is selected you can just double click on the edge to bring up the layer style or just go to fx which is right here so um i'll go to the gradient overlay 
now at the gradient overlay just click on gradient you know this space over here then select the second preset which is foreground to transparent make sure that both colors at these edges are black so i'll just double click and drag this to the extreme black corner which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0006 times and i'll double click on this or you can just click one time and click on color right here then you select the color you want so once that is done i'll click on ok now if i come to the main image still in the gradient overlay you see when i click and drag you can see the shadow taking effect if you can't see let me just increase it a little bit so that you can probably see now it is increasing from an angle because i have my angle set to 45 i'm going to change that to 90 degrees so that it comes from the bottom and moves upwards like so now i don't want it to be too much you know obviously we can't have it covering up the entire image so i reduce the opacity to right around 50 i think that should be okay for me and i'll just adjust it by clicking and dragging using my mouse so i think right around here should be okay and i'll click on okay so this is our first layer style um this is the before and this is the after so you can see we have this shadow from the bottom now once you are done i'm going to duplicate this layer so ctrl j to duplicate so with the bottom layer selected i'll right click and go to rasterize layer style so the layer style will be applied on the image itself i'll go to filter i'll go to blur and under blur i'll click on motion blur so for motion blur i'm going to set my angle to 90 degrees so that it is moving you no know, upwards or downwards either way and i'm going to increase the distance to about 50 i'll click ok so if i zoom in you can see if i turn off the original image let me call this original so that i don't confuse you and i'll call this blur image i hate having wrong spelling so if i turn off the original image you can see that we have this blurred image at the bottom now this is what we want the idea is to make it seem like this image is floating at the same time moving so um, i'll create a layer style for the original and i'll quickly grab my brush tool from here and i'll just brush over the bottom so since my layer mask is white i'll make sure that my foreground color is black so that any part i brush over is going to hide them up so you see if i brush over this area is hiding that part up now i'm going to increase the size of my brush a little bit probably around 100 by right clicking so i think i think 100 is still a little bit too small so i'll go let's try 300 pixel then i'll just brush over here so we have this whole motion effect from the bottom i think this is looking fine but the problem is at the top here the motion blurred image is also fading upwards we don't want that so i'll go to the blurred image i'll create a layer max for that and with my brush to also make sure that the foreground color is set to black i'll just brush over that top so that i'll take away the top so this is what we are having if i turn off the main image you see you have just some part of the blurred image if i turn off the blurred image you have just some part of the original image so basically um this is what we want to have and i think it's already looking pretty damn neat i'm going to create um, a last group on top of this and i'm going to call this group um, effect i usually do this in my photo manipulation um, images all the time i'll create a new layer i'll change the blend mode to screen and i'll select a color like uh, blue uh, or red no well, let's just go with blue so this color should be okay then i'll use my brush to one more time increase the size to around um 1000 then i'll click on the image just once so we have this um you no know, lighting effect you can call it and i'll put it somewhere around well somewhere around where my arm is now we can use different colors for this i'll actually be using two colors i think this blue color is not too nice so i'll create a new layer and i'll select probably a, a little bit darker blue so with my brush tool i'll brush 
yeah change the foreground change the blend mode to screen obviously so i'll put this somewhere around here and i'll create another one this time around i'm going to use a color like orange you know for a uh, warm it doesn't have to be too orange so i think this should be just fine i'm going to place this one over I think this one over my hand should be okay then i'll bring this one somewhere around here so i'll duplicate this and put one over at this corner and increase the size so it's taking up that entire space and i'll duplicate this two the orange one i'll place one over at this corner so that it takes up quite some space okay i think this one is looking uh a bit too much so i reduce the opacity of this one to about um, 50 okay so for the screen effects um i'll just group this and call this screen because all the blending modes we use for this is screen i'll create another one this time around i'll go to the adjustment panel and i'll create a gradient using the same foreground color and background color from previously so I'll click on the gradient and this time around, I'll select the first one, which is foreground to background. And I'll click on, I won't click on OK just yet. I'll make sure that the colors I'm using are the darker version of the original colors. So I'll just take the darker version. And um, this is because I don't want it to be too overexposed. So once I'm done, I, I think I'm going to reverse this so that the blue will be at the bottom and the orange or brown will be at the top. And I'll change this to um, screen. So once I'm done, I'll just go ahead and play with the opacity and see how it is looking. So I think 50% um, opacity should be just okay. And the final thing will be adding curves to the entire image. So I'll drag this to the bottom here to darken it up and I'll drag it up here to make it a little bit more dramatic. Now, before I let you go, I'll just tell you that change the foreground color to black and make sure you darken up the bottom so that all the attention is directed towards the original image. So with that done, just go to the adjustment panel, click on gradient one more time. Now, the first one is going to be a linear gradient and I'll click and drag this over at this portion. Um, it shouldn't be too much. I think somewhere around here should be okay. Now again, play with the opacity. I'll go with a opacity of about 50. The second gradient, I'm going to change the style to radial. I'm going to reverse it and increase it all the way to 1000. So that one too will give it this kind of um, vignette effect. So basically, um, I think that is it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you like to watch more of our videos. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we upload videos like this and many more on our channel every single week. And if you have any comments, please let me know in the comments below and I will go down there and reply as many as I can. So thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.